Hey, it's break time. Let's take a break from the hunt. Taking a break is brought to you by our good friends up at Banks Boats. What is taking a break? Well, today it's all about the ducks, the ducks, dogs, and the decoys. It's something that I enjoy about our sport of waterfowling. Let's check it out. How close you got to get to them to shoot them within that? About 15 yards. Will they let you do that? I think I should be able to shoot it without the net falling out. Okay, if you can, hold it like quality. this. And, then and then just, just let it go right. They said just go right ahead and release it right in the water. Don't don't throw it or anything. Just let it okay. release it right off into the Ready? shore. All right, yeah. Just lay it down right in the water. Ready? Scott, when you had us up at Long Point, we visited with you. You, you told us what we could expect to see. We've, uh, we've come down here, we've seen the birds tracked, we've seen the transmitters in, in, in installed and planted, and we've released the birds today. What, what do you hope to get from all this? Well, we're, we're hoping to get uh, a lot of information with respect to habitat use as these birds move across the landscape, how much time they spend in different um, uh, biomes uh, throughout North America, how long they spend in major, major staging areas, and um, compare spring and fall migrations. We're also very interested in seeing how long it takes them to get to the breeding grounds, and that has implications for selenium depuration. We know very little about, well, we know where birds come from and go to, but we really don't know that much about how they move across the landscape. So this is going to collectively give us lots of wonderful information. Uh, we, we've been out here for the last month or so, Presque Isle State Park, uh, Pennsylvania, and we've been using dive traps baited with corn to capture the scop. Uh, along with the scop, we've banded approximately 900 ducks. Uh, mostly ring necks, and we've also used a couple other techniques uh, such as mist netting <laughs> and net gunning. And net gunning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, would like to pre uh, <clears throat> give our appreciation to all our partners in this project. Uh, Pennsylvania Game Commission can never have done this without the financial support and uh, as well as the field support <clears throat> from the Northwest Pennsylvania Duck Hunters Association. Uh, Pennsylvania Waterfowl Heritage Society, Susquehanna River Waterfowlers, Pennsylvania Wildlife for Everyone Foundation, and uh, of course, also we got a, a matching grant from the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, Great Lakes Fish and Wildlife Restoration Act, uh, really st made this uh, project possible uh, to purchase the transmitters and the data downloads from the satellite company, as well as the in-kind support from the uh, United States Ge Geologic Survey, Dr. Glenn Olson from the Tuxent Wildlife Research Center to perform the surgeries. Uh, the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources for allowing us to work on, on Presque Isle State Park and the Regional Science Consortium for the use of their facilities for, the, for uh, in, uh, doing the surgeries, uh, as well as the United States Coast Guard uh, allowed us to work on their properties here at, at Presque Isle Bay. Yeah, the, the surgeries uh, are take about an hour to an hour and a half altogether. We use uh, 
uh, anesthesia. The birds are under anesthetic the whole time. We give them also additional um, analgesic or pain relief uh, following the surgery so they're not feeling any pain when we release them here. We give them supportive care in the form of lactator bringer solution. Uh, and uh, the surgery basically allows us to implant the little transmitter in, their, in one of their little air sacs and uh, with, as you can see, a little antenna that comes out through the skin uh, through a little port that basically makes use of uh, uh, human technology. There's a, a little cuff there that's used in peritoneal dialysis uh, for human patients uh, that we suture into the skin and uh, allows the antenna to come out without causing the bird any problems. And, uh, other than that, the, they usually do pretty well. They'll live for years with the, with the transmitters in with no problems. And the transmitters will last for a couple of years too. As Dr. Olson said, we'll be able to track these birds for, uh, with any luck, a couple years. Initially, we'll be, uh, we'll be able to get uh, locations uh, daily uh, for the first 10 days or so, and then every third day for a couple months until we know that they're going to be on the breeding grounds. Then we'll only track them, we'll only get locations once every 10 days or so, and then we'll get uh, more locations come fall migration again. So the transmitters are structured such that we get more locations during the migratory period. And... Um, uh, so we're going to get lots of really wonderful information. We'll be able to compare birds between years and between seasons and, uh, and then combine that with the other 45 birds that we've done. We're going to have a wonderful data set for uh, looking at how, how Scott move across the landscape. And you folks can follow these birds on our website. That's the Long Point Waterfowl website. We'll have them up on our SCOP tracker and uh, we'll be updating probably daily so you can follow them for the next couple of years. That was taking a break. Let's let this guy go and see what kind of data he can bring us back. Right. Herp.